Hey guys, Jeb Brooks, greenergrass.com. Last year I flew from Seoul, Incheon Airport, to Ulaanbaatar in Mongolia. I flew with Korean Air in their business class cabin and it was a really cool flight. Not much has changed with Korean Air service in the, uh, in the year or so since I took that flight. And uh, so I thought I'd share that trip report with you. Let's go back in time to Seoul and check out that service. Seoul's Incheon Airport is new, clean, and full of glass, making it a plane spotter's dream. Now that said, I've had several long layovers in Incheon, including this one of nearly seven hours. And frankly, I got bored after a while. All those Korean tales, it would have been nice to see something a little different. Business class on this A330 is arranged in a 2-2-2 configuration. I was here at the window and found it a little bit challenging, given the fact that I had a seat mate I didn't know. The good news, of course, is I had a window seat. And once I was in, there is plenty of leg room on this A330. Shortly after boarding, I was offered a pre-departure beverage of champagne and some nuts. Now my seat, 7A, was located just behind the first class cabin, which is arranged in exactly the same seating configuration, 222, as the business class configuration. The difference, of course, is the, the food and the attention, I suppose. Now, the seat adjustments were convenient, though a little restrictive for this flight. But it was to be a short flight of only 3 hours, 40 minutes. One note about my seat located in the bulkhead. If you ever select a bulkhead seat, as I did, there's always a chance you'll be moved to accommodate a family with a baby in need of a bassinet, or for someone with a physical disability. Now, of course, I didn't get moved, which was my good luck. And almost immediately after takeoff, those first class curtains were closed. As exciting as watching a couple of flight attendants close a curtain is, the real excitement was just outside the window. Now I know many passengers prefer the bulkhead. I, on the other hand, do not. Let me know in the comments if you like it or not. One of the reasons I don't is because the entertainment is often located in the armrest as it was on this A330. I don't like that. I prefer to have it in the seat back in front of me. Now that said, Korean's entertainment was more than sufficient for this flight. There were plenty in the way of choices, and the screen was really relatively responsive. I was impressed with Korean's entertainment. Dinner started with a salad, followed by Korean's world-famous bibimbap. I found it to be quite delicious. Feel free to call me weak, but I don't like a lot of heat in my food. That said, it was just right for me. As you can see, I ate every drop. And that did not stop me from enjoying some ice cream as well. One funny experience in this flight. At one point, a flight attendant was pouring me a glass of wine. She missed and instead poured the wine all over my pants. She spent the next few minutes cleaning it up. It was an interesting experience on a plane. After a quick form to enter Mongolia, it was time for those first class flight attendants to open the curtains up again. Mongolia turned out to be one of the coolest places I've ever visited in my life. I wrote about it over at greenergrass.com and I'll include uh, some links in the description uh, to some of those articles because it really was a special place. But for now, let me know in the comments what you think of Korean Air service. How do you feel about how they did? Let me know. Hey, if you liked the video, click the thumbs up button. If for some reason you didn't, click the thumbs down button twice. I'm only kidding. Hey, seriously, I hope you'll consider subscribing if you haven't already because there are plenty more trip reports to come and I hope you'll be among the first to find out when I publish new ones. 
Thanks again for watching. Between now and the next time, see you in the sky.